Conditional styles can help you save a lot of time if you have elements like this, where you have repeating elements like these day trips, and they are formatted always the same way. In this case, my city is formatted with a paragraph style sheet city line, then I have a price that is formatted with the character style sheet price, I have a body text, then I have an ellipsis at the end that is formatted with a style sheet, and my second last word is always formatted with a character style sheet red. So if I want to do that for the first column also, then I have to click or apply four to five styles per day trip. To make that easier, I will create myself a conditional style. And a conditional style can, based on the content, apply certain style sheets. So in this case, I have a bullet here that identifies my city trips. I have for my price a tab, then I have body text, I have an ellipsis, and my second last word is always formatted in red. So how do I create that? Let's create a new conditional style here. I'll just call that city trips, any name. And the first thing I will do is I apply a certain style sheet, with this, which is my uh, city line here, and I'll apply that up to the tab character. So when I'm here now at the tab character, the next thing is I will apply the price character. I could have used the dollar sign if I only have dollar signs here, but since I have different currencies, I need to identify this via the tab character. So here I'll apply my price style sheet up to, in this case, the end of the paragraph. So I'm here. Now I need to apply my body text. So I'll apply body text. And that's not up to the end of the paragraph because there could be many. So I will just go until I find three dots here. So my cursor basically is here, finished with formatting. And the last thing I will do is just to show you a different function here is I will apply my ellipsis or paragraph style sheet at the current cursor position because I'm already here so I can apply this for the whole paragraph. So I've done one, London would be formatted and to have that automatically repeated at the other cities like Hamburg and Paris, what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that when I find a certain character which is my bullet. I say okay, conditional style is created, I need to apply that, for that I select all of the text, I click on city trips and you can see everything is formatted correctly. One thing is still missing, that is my second last word here, indicating with or without breakfast. To do that, I will edit my city trip conditional style, I'll add a certain rule, so you can see now my cursor basically is here, so what I will do is I will go back, so I won't apply a style sheet, I will go back, and I will go backwards to the beginning of, or backwards, the beginning of my paragraph. So I know I'll be here. Because the next thing I will do is I need to find the next dot going backwards. So if my cursor is still here, I might find this dot. So I need to be at the beginning of the uh, paragraph first. So next thing I will do is I will go backwards until I find a certain character which is a dot and I won't go backwards through, I will just go backwards too so I won't include the dot. And once I'm there, then it's easy, I won't go, I won't move my cursor position anymore, I will apply my red character style sheet and I will do that up to a certain number of words, exactly one, right? So I'm finished now, I did everything correctly, say OK, you can see this is formatted. Second last word. And now the nice thing is since I applied that to my text, when I type, so when I put in a bullet and I put in another city, Denver, I hit the tab key, I put in a dollar sign, let's make that 9. 99, you can see the styling is applied while I type. So this is live. So um, maybe call this just the flight dot no breakfast. 
And the formatting, the red isn't applied yet because we are not at the ellipses yet. So if I put in three dots, you can see the ellipses is formatted automatically and also the no is highlighted in red.